247. Yep, and it's about 50 meters off trail. That would be right that way. Okay. Our vegetation inventory is important because I think people don't understand in this day and age how little we do know about our, our parks. And by the end of our project, we'll have a much more detailed information about our vegetation resources um, from the coast up into the Alpine. And, um, and I, I think it's time that we, that we have this information in our hands. Okay, what about for the overstory trees? So the forest that we're looking at right here is a um, Pseudosuga menziesii, which is a Douglas fir forest, and then the understory is dominated by Salal, which is a Galtheria shallon, and um, Vaccinium parviflorum, red huckleberry. DBH is diameter at breast height, so it's standard four and a half feet off the ground, and for me it's about here. So we use DBH to get an average of what the overall DBH for the stand would be. Since I'm not seeing any large change in vegetation, I can extrapolate that it's the same forest type in the north direction. And I'll do that in each cardinal direction to see. And then if I see that there's like more shrubbery or more herbaceous cover or it's brighter, obviously something's going to be changing there. Well, we're excited about our mapping work in the North Coast and Cascades Network because we're trying out some mapping techniques that have not been used before in combining um, satellite-based remote sensing information with aerial, new aerial photography for the parks. And uh, we're hoping that these maps will represent some of the best new vegetation inventory information for the Pacific Northwest. We know we have a huge variety of plant communities in our parks, but at this point we don't have good spatial locations uh, where, where those are occurring on the landscape. So by the end of our project, we'll have a lot more information about um, where our forested communities and shrub communities, subalpine communities, actually exist within our parks. One thing that, that we need as we look forward into the a future with an uncertain climate is a good understanding for vegetation conditions in, in our current time. And so we see these maps as representing a baseline description of vegetation that we can use um, in the future as we look backwards and see how vegetation has changed. We can also use them now to try to create some best guesses about how vegetation might change in response to changing climate.